I'm Danielle Jensen, the Mom Ambassador Liaison here at Moms Meet. Thanks for joining us today for the Zevia webinar where you will get your questions answered by Natalie Gershon from Zevia. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them into the chat window. With that said, Natalie, please take it away. Hi, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. We are really excited to um, share a little bit more about our products, our company, our passions, and a few fun things we have going on. So without hesitation, let's just jump right in. Um, I think it's a great place to start and talk about a little, a little about who we are as an organization. Um, we are a team with a lot of natural product history. Uh, we have members who were, our CEO, Patty Spence, was actually at Kashi when Kashi was just puffed grain cereal. I want to say he was there when it was about seven people. Um, peddling rice peel off, and he's really seen the industry grow. One of our um, other senior management team members uh, kind of did the same thing at Silk Soy Milk. Um, we have people from the natural health and beauty category, natural pet products, and so this is a, this is a group who kind of has become natural organic food enthusiasts. This is who we are. This is what we shop. Um, at the same time, it's not the only thing we shop, and we're all over the spectrum when it comes to kind of how health and wellness fits into our grocery purchase and our daily life. Um, we really focus on smarter choices. That's kind of our, our team mission and motto. It's about making smaller, smarter choices every day, and I think that still means that you get a few guilty pleasures along the way. Um, but we are excited that because we're all soda lovers, we could take soda out of the guilty pleasure category and put it in something that we didn't um, feel like we had to avoid. I myself, that's a picture of me and my son Griffin, who's two and a half. Um, I myself was a soda lover but hadn't enjoyed one uh, or enjoyed one regularly in probably six or seven years before I found Zevia. Um, just didn't want the sugar and the calories, and I definitely didn't want the artificial sweeteners that came with the diet versions, although I grew up in a household where that, where that was present and common. Um, I was just trying to make, a, you know, again, one small, smarter choice before I even knew that was a thing. Um, so the Zevia team is, is a group really focused on this, you know, and I think more importantly, we are parents. We have 29 kids among 23 employees. We, we are aiming to make better products and really focused on helping this industry grow because we want to leave that legacy for our kids. We want there to be a world where, you know, they can shop the grocery aisle with confidence that there are products that are both great tasting and okay for them. So they're really the reason we do what we do. So let's talk a little bit more about what Zevia is. Um, I'd like to say it's all the good soda stuff with none of the bad. So all the bad stuff, um, we eliminated the calories. All Zevia products are zero calories. None contain sugar or fructose or artificial sweeteners or high fructose corn syrup. Um, all Zevia products have no net carbs and a zero glycemic index. Um, but most importantly, you know, there's 15 delicious, naturally sweetened flavors, kind of something for everybody. These are the familiar favorite flavors that you grew up loving, um, like cola, cherry cola, cream soda, grape soda, strawberry, ginger ale. There's really something for everybody. And, and you know, we know a lot about this category because we actually were the first to create a naturally sweetened zero calorie soda. And our founders truly had a diet soda addiction and they just wanted to do something better. So let's talk a little bit about where our sweetness comes from. If we're not using sugar or artificial sweeteners, how the heck is this bubbly, delicious drink becoming so sweet? So last December, we actually launched a brand new sweetening system called Sweet Smart. Uh, it's special, exclusive for Zevia, and it's made up of stevia, monk fruit, and erythritol. And I'll talk a little bit more about what each of those are, but you can see we're still primarily sweetened with Stevia. It's been, we've been sweetened with Stevia since 2007, um, and it's still where the majority of our sweetness comes in. Monk fruit is a new addition to our, to our sweetening blend, and it really helps um, balance out the taste, give it a little bit more of a mainstream soda appeal, um, and then a little bit from erythritol, and this helps just kind of at the tail end of our sweetness. So 
so what are these three sweeteners? Um, stevia, as, we, as you saw, it's over 80% of our sweetness comes from this little plant. Um, originally native to South America, its leaves are two to 300 times sweeter than sugar. It has no caloric value, no effect on blood glucose levels. And in fact, all of our stevia comes from 100% U.S. crops. Uh, Bloomberg Business did a really cool story last year in which they were sharing um, that all of the, uh, a lot of the old tobacco fields in the um, south have now converted to stevia fields, which is, which is really exciting that, you know, something that was a kind of bad for you agriculture story and an industry that has really changed from a health perspective um, now has these little plants that are changing in a more positive way how we sweeten our, our foods and beverages. Um, monk fruit is a new sweetener, um, not new, let's, not new necessarily to the world, but newer to us. Um, it's a round green fruit, looks a lot like a melon, but it's actually a gourd. It's grown on lush vines in subtropical climates on Asian hillsides. It's harvested by hand. Um, with a hot water kind of extraction crushing process to release its natural sweetness. It's a few hundred times sweeter than sugar, but again, no calories, no um, fructose, and no effect on blood glucose levels. So when we started investigating monk fruit and really trying it in our formulas, we realized how similar this was to stevia. And I really think you're going to see uh, monk fruit become something you'll hear more about every single day. And then erythritol is the very scary sounding but not so scary sweetener that we have used since the beginning as well. It's always complemented our stevia. It kind of takes out that bitter aftertaste if you taste that. Um, if you have tasted that in the past, erythritol works really nicely with stevia to help eliminate some of that. But it's a natural component of fruits and vegetables and grains. It's called a sugar alcohol, although it's not a sugar or an alcohol. Um, it's fermented, much like yogurt from milk, has no calories and a zero glycemic index. And just in case you're wondering, to be specific, our erythritol comes from non-GMO corn. So if you're wondering why we need Zevia and why now is a really you know, crucial time for uh, these better choices, um, here's a bit more on our passion. Um, because 96% of households purchase soda. This is something that everyone buys, whether it's healthy or not healthy. So I know that we can make, you know, we could definitely help move, move households in a more positive direction there. Because diabetes and obesity have become a national health epidemic. Because no one feels good about consuming more artificial sweeteners. And because the health, risk, health risks of sugar are becoming more studied and more prominent every single day. And because we simply knew there had to be a better way. So as we talked about the, con you know, sugar concerns are higher than ever. Um, I recently went to see Fed Up, this fabulous documentary that Katie Couric both narrates and those executive produced. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would highly encourage you to find a theater in your area with it. It was a, it was an eye opener personally for me, and I think the rest, not to speak for the rest of the team, but I think they would agree as well. Um, sugar can be labeled in many, many different ways. Uh, some of the, the healthier versions we're hearing about are turbinado sugar, coconut sugar, date sugar, organic raw cane sugar, cane juice. Um, you know, the, some of my favorites are high fructose corn syrup and the rebranding of corn sugar or corn syrup. I, I don't know if anyone was surprised that corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup are the same thing. Um, agave, honey, molasses, sucrose, or fructose. I think the point is they're all full of calories and they all can affect our body in negative ways. Uh, besides leading to tooth decay, diabetes, and obesity when consumed, you know, in mass. There are recent studies. We've had some great media come out um, publishing really reputable scientific studies um, in the New York Times, Mother Jones, and National Geographic. Uh, and I think the scariest piece that I read that Recent studies show that um, insulin produced from consuming sugar helps breed cancer cells. And that was in the New York Times uh, Sweet and Vicious article. And, I, you know, what was really a, an eye-opener for me is if you, this is maybe a not-so-fun fact, 
Uh, a quick way to visualize how much sugar is in an item is if you can divide the number of grams of sugar by four, that's the number of teaspoons you consume. So an average full calorie soda, cola for instance, would have 39-ish grams of, of sugar. So that's 10 teaspoons. And that was a huge eye opener when I started thinking about it in the number of teaspoons that would that would actually look like in a glass. So we know that beverages can be loaded with sugar. It's a really, really dangerous place to consume so much because it's easy for us to consume multiple versions of those in a day. Um, juices, energy drinks, vitamin waters. Um, ready to drink teas, even coconut water, these seemingly healthy natural energy drinks can be chock full of sugar grams. But that's not the only place sugar is hiding. And I went on a personal journey after I saw that documentary set up and kind of took a, took a personal sugar stock, both on, my sh on a recent shopping trip and just what I have in my own household. And here were some of the most shocking ones. Um, we have a, you know, a super healthy cereal option that has just one gram of sugar per serving up to what I will call my husband's dirty little secret has 18 grams per serving. Uh, yogurt, again, even my non-sweetened Greek yogurt, non-flavored, totally plain, has six grams of sugar per serving, which I was completely surprised by. Um, on the go, I have been known to grab an energy or a meal bar, like a cliff bar, um, and that has 21 grams of sugar in it. Salad dressing, think I'm making a healthier choice at lunch, and, and sometimes uh, a little bit of dried fruit with 24 grams of sugar on top of my salad can, can put you over the edge. Uh, even bread, I recently probably had to pick up six to seven loaves of bread to find one without four to six grams of sugar per slice. I think the biggest offender, which really shocked me, was that the tiny little boxes of raisins that I will occasionally give my son as an easy on-the-go snack, um, what I think of as nature's candy, has 30 grams of sugar in a very small box. Granola bars, and then, you know, pasta sauce and barbecue sauce were a little bit shocking for me as well, simply because I wouldn't necessarily just pour um, three table, or three teaspoons of sugar on top of my spaghetti, but it definitely feels like what I was doing when I'm seeing some of these uh, package labels. So why is sugar in almost everything? Um, it improves the taste. We are technically conditioned to like sweetness, but again, I think that we can be, studies show that we can untrain our taste buds to, in that way. And it can also serve as a preservative to lengthen the items or the shelf life of an item. So in my journey to avoid sugar, I started noticing that if I didn't want the sugar, I was going to have to replace it. And it was an artificial sweetener that became so prominent and a part of every item that I, every other item that I was picking up. Um, these are labeled in many, many different ways. Sucralose is the name for Splen is the Splenda is the branded name of sucralose. Equal is the branded name of aspartame, NutraSweet. They've recently started calling it Amino Sweet. Um, Sweet and Low is the name of saccharin. There's also HK, Neotame. You know, there are a lot of concerns with artificial sweeteners, and I'm sure, well, I can take you through a few here. You have probably heard these yourselves, and you've probably Googled them as well. Um, I don't know that anybody would put on their New Year's resolution list, I'd like to have more artificial sweeteners this year. So we're all attempting to eat more whole foods and eat just a little bit more clean and healthy. So avoiding these was really important from my perspective as well. Uh, sucralose was discovered when trying to create an insecticide and the presence of chlorine is one of its most dangerous components. Aspartame was actually made in the lab from two amino acids and studies show that it can convert to formaldehyde in digestion. Um, in fact, I think the scariest part was that the Center for Science and the Public Interest suggests that ch um, people, especially children, should not consume it. And I found it in so many products that I thought would be safe and healthy to give my son. Uh, additionally, saccharin, I think this one just shocks me the most. Since 1981, it's been listed as a, quote, anticipated human carcinogen, and it's still something that you see at coffee shops and grocery stores today. In fact, the American Medical Association's Council on Scientific Affairs suggests that parents and caregivers limit young, young children's intake of saccharin across the board. So foods that I was 
I found completely surprising that had artificial sweeteners. Bread, chips, a lot of yogurt, many, many yogurts, in fact, granola bars, cereal, and I think the most shocking were prepackaged fruits and vegetables. I love the convenience factor of picking up um, a little no sugar added cup of mandarin oranges for my son or other packaged fruit. And the no sugar added is really the trigger word there. Um, no sugar added meant we didn't just pack them in water, we put aspartame in them. So that was a real eye opener for me. And I started identifying trigger words that can help you, that, that kind of make me think a little bit about is that artificially sweetened and how are they getting there? So low fat or reduced fat, even fat free. The words diet, zero calories, and no sugar added were big ones I noticed. So how, how, do, how can you avoid these? Um, we can look at the packaging for these trigger words. We can check the nutrition panel for the sugar count. And if zero grams of sugar are very low, look at that ingredient list and identify if a natural or artificial sweetener is being used. Um, I like to find products that talk about no sugar added and they're either natural or organic because this means they have to be using a natural sweetening option. So artificial sweeteners are gonna be avoided. Um, you know, we know it's impossible to avoid sugar as a whole and that's not what, that's not really the, the the life we live here, but we definitely try to, as I said, make smaller, smarter choices, and just finding ways to consciously know what we're consuming is really important for us. Um, so let's see if we can share. We did a little fun video series because while we think artificial sweeteners are definitely something to avoid, here's one of the reasons why we think there's something to avoid. Uh, guys. Hey, what you doing? Uh, hey, Stevia. I just found this old photo of me and some of the friends. We all grew up in the same lab together. That's me, and that's sucralose and saccharin, and that's Ace K. That guy was unpredictable. <laughs> we had a boy band together, the Keith edition. You may have heard uh, our single, Love is the only side effect. But we had to, you know, take it down because there were all more side effects than just love. Anyway, where'd you grow up? I just, I grew up in nature. So I hope you can see that, you know, while we do take very seriously um, our eliminating artificial sweeteners and sugar, both from our products and, and trying to find healthier ways to consume it as a whole, um, we definitely want to make sure that, that we have we have some fun while we, while we help share this message. There's many more videos, so if you want to check those out, I can share a link at the end. A few more fun facts about Stevia. Um, we am so proud to announce that in 2014, we became the zero calorie soda of the Oakland A's. This is the first time that a major league sports team has decided to make a healthier soda, soda choice and offer their fans something in the ballpark um, that's naturally sweetened and zero calories. It's been so fun. Um, additionally, 80s rapper and Yo Gabba Gabba beatboxer Fizz Marquis uh, is a friend of our brand and credits Stevia as a key part of this 150 pound weight loss. One of the many fun things you can do with Stevia is to bake with it. We love to incorporate Stevia into recipes, but I think one of my favorites is when a, when a recipe both has Stevia, has no added sugar, and is super easy. So this is a recipe I love sharing. It's any one box of cake mix plus any one can of Zevia. Stir it just like the directions say. Pop it in the oven at the same temperature for the same amount of time, and you are going to have a delicious cake or cupcake come out. So super easy, and there's endless flavor combinations. We've had cream soda in carrot cake, orange soda in devil's food. I love grape or fun um, or strawberry and like a white cake or making your own funfetti. And then if you want to whip together a frosting with no added sugar as well, I love to use cream cheese and blend a little bit of stevia in there for something that's sweet and delicious. In other recipes, in the summer is the perfect time to make root, um, you know, the traditional root beer float, but we wanted to kick it up a notch as well. So we have a really fun contest we'd love to share with you. It's called Zevia Floats Your Boat. Um, we just want to excite our fans and encourage all of these amazing recipes that we get every single day from our creative community. 
Um, some of my favorites I just selected and pictured down here. There's a, an amazing sea salt caramel apple pie float made with Zevia ginger ale by one of our fans. There's a really guilt-free strawberry float. I believe she used um, coconut milk ice, cream, or ice cubes and froze some, some strawberry Greek yogurt, blended it all together with the Zevia, and blended it all together and topped it with the Zevia strawberry. So as you can see, the opportunities and the flavor combinations are endless. This is a really fun way that you could win a $500 grocery gift card to the retailer of your choice. Um, we also have four $200 runner-up prizes for some great categories like float name, creative ingredients, best feature of a Zevia flavor, and best guilt-free option. So this will be running through the summer. Definitely, you know, grab a Zevia, get creative on these warm summer days, and please enter at zevia.com slash float. We'll share that link again at the end. And then very, very special for just these webinar attendees. Um, we have a fun, fun program called Soda Selfie. We're celebrating all of our amazing fans who very naturally post pictures proud with their Zevia cans on social media. And just for this Moms Meet group, um, if you submit your Zevia Soda Selfie on Twitter or Instagram by this Sunday, and go ahead and hashtag GMM for Green Moms Meet, we'll go ahead and send you a free six-pack coupon. So that's all you have to do. Share your Zevia pride on Twitter or Instagram, hashtagging Soda Selfie and GMM for a free six-pack coupon. Some exciting stuff.